In this episode, I'm going to look at a JVC TDR272. This is a single deck, auto reverse cassette deck from the 1980s, just a Dolby B type auto reverse two head deck that uh, was given to me. Don't know what's wrong with this one. Doesn't work. Guy said when he gave it to me, doesn't work. So let's figure out what the problem with this one is and see if we can get it going. Here's a JVC TDR 272 auto reverse cassette deck. It's got a three motor silent mechanism, so there's no solenoids in this unit. And I haven't tried it yet. As you can see, this thing is filthy. This uh, came from the same house that all the smoking stuff came from. All the components that were just filled with smoke. So, um, it's going to need a good cleaning. But, uh, yeah, let's get a load of the head in this thing. It is absolutely disgusting. Flashlight in here. The whole mechanism, whole mechanism is uh, is pretty bad. Oh, yuck! Look at the head. Yeah, um, it's looking pretty gross inside here. We'll give this thing a cleaning before I even put a tape in it. I mean, you can just tell. Look at the look at how. Ugh. It's like gross. You can't even see the back of it. It's so it's so disgusting. This is uh, what smoking does. I just want you guys to see how clear this this head comes in a minute here once I get it get actually get in here and clean it. getting better still got a lot of brown stuff on it doesn't look like this unit's had many hours on it either there's no wear but as you can see there was a fair bit of uh, a film on there it's a lot better than it was Still, it still needs to be cleaned. It's still pretty, pretty gummed up with tar. I just want to try and get this thing slightly cleaner before I even put a tape into it. That's a little better. The uh, rubber rollers don't look to be in great shape either. I don't even know if this thing works. I plug it in. Hooked up everything else, it just didn't plug the power cord in. Of course, it's not going to do anything unless there's a tape in it because I'm sure it's got tape detectors, which it does. It has the tape detector switches up at the top that detect if there's a tape in it. And guess what? They don't work. Um, guaranteed that those switches are dirty. Um, this came from the same guy that had that Panasonic mini system that was that was all full of smoke. Take a look at the top here. You'll see that here's the detector switches that detect if there's a tape in place and the smoke has gotten into those switches and just gummed them up. So we're going to take this one apart even to see if we can get any life out of this one at all be interesting to see whether how it works and if it works how well it works this would be one of the decks that I sell if I get this one going just because I do keep some tape decks the better ones like that Technique 767 I'll keep that deck unless someone offers me a ridiculous amount of money for it. If someone wants it bad enough, it'll sell.
so it's an empty box basically. Um, these units here were, I guess this was probably the 80s. I'm thinking what year was this one? I would think this is probably 80s because it's only a Dolby B deck. It doesn't have Dolby C on it. But it is an auto reverse. But it's just Dolby B. So I would think it's probably mid 80s when this one was uh, brought to market. The tape door doesn't lift off. A lot of them the cover would lift off for cleaning. This one here doesn't appear to. It's, it, this is all part of the tape loading mechanism but the mechanism does come out quite easy and uh, that might be the answer to get out these switches to clean them is to take the mechanism out because uh, it'll be easier to clean it with the mechanism out than in so to get the mechanism out there's four screws around the perimeter and I have to unplug the head and unplug the mechanism here and then I can take the deck out and clean those switches out of the out of the cabinet because they're kind of hard to get at when it's together so we'll take out the screws and remove the deck For you, you with the sharp eyes out there, this mechanism looks to be the same as that double deck that had the circuit board on the top that was broken. If you remember that one a while back, the double JVC that had the long board across the top and had a crack because somebody hit it. This looks to be the same deck, but in a, a single uh, uh, player um, factor form factor. So here's the. The deck itself, as you can see, these are the switches that detect uh, whether A, there's a tape in position, and B, if there's a record um, tab in place so that the deck can record or not. And then there's going to be another one that detects whether it's a metal tape or a chrome tape. The switches are as follows. You've got a, on the edge here, this switch over here is going to detect whether it there's a tape in place or not. Sorry. Correction, these are going to detect if the tab for record is in place, is what those ones are for. The next switch over, which is this one here, is the chrome detection switch. And one of these switches is detecting whether it's a metal tape or not. How tapes were designed, let me grab a couple tapes here so I can show you guys for you guys that don't know how, they, how the auto detection worked. And I do have in my hand here probably one of the rarest tapes that you'll ever see because these were not on the market for very long of course this is a standard bias tape here and these tabs here of course you broke them out for if you didn't want to record always the one on the left side so if you didn't want to record on side a you would break out this tab and side b of course when it's flipped over was always the one on the left side that's the one you would break out and then that would prevent recording that's the record lockout switches on a standard cassette and the high bias tapes which were the next type of tapes to come out they had these extra set of holes as you can see here I've actually covered the record lockout tabs with um, tape because I wanted to I at one time recorded something on this tape that I thought I was going to keep and then I decided nah I didn't need to keep it and I put tape over them but the other tabs here and this is a problem people would put tape over both tabs and they wonder why the recording didn't record properly because the second set of tabs as you can see here if we look at the other tape, it had an extra set of holes, and these ones were actually, uh, at the factory, these ones were molded like this, or broken. I don't think they had tabs in them, but they were, the holes were, the detection holes were molded into the cassette. And what this did was this told the cassette deck that it was, in fact, a high bias tape. There's another type of tape called a Type 4, which was a metal tape. And the metal tape, and I'm going to keep you guys in suspense here, so I'll show it to you this way, before I show you the tape itself, because it's a, it's a relatively rare beast, this one. Um, they were on the market for a short period of time and then they, they were taken off the market. And you'll, you'll see it in a minute. But the metal tape has these extra set of, of detection holes here. In addition to having the high bias detection, they also had the metal detection because the, the high bias detection would tell the playback circuit to use um, 70 microseconds instead of uh, 
120 microseconds equalization and to use high bias for recording. The extra set of holes did nothing for the, the playback circuit, so that's why they still have this detection hole here for the playback circuit, 70 microseconds, but it was to increase the bias current for metal tape. So they had this extra set of holes. And as you can see, which ones do these line up with? These ones line up with um, these ones here in the middle. So this one here, this is the detection for metal tape. This one over here is going to be the one that detects if there's actually a cassette in place. So this is the one that closes when there's a tape placed into the compartment to tell the machine that there's a tape loaded. Now the reason I'm hiding this tape and not letting you guys see it and keeping you guys in suspense is it's a metal tape, but it was uh, it was the length of the tape that was really special on this. And they were not around for very long. At least I never saw them for very long. It was made by TDK, and here it was. The Type 4 position MA110. That's 110 minutes total recording time. The longest metal tape I have ever seen was the MA110. Uh, they made some regular cassettes into the 120 size. Uh, a lot of people frowned on using the long tapes because the tapes were thinner and they had a tendency to stretch or break. Uh, these metal tapes actually did work pretty good. You know, I, I wouldn't have used them in a car stereo, for example, just because um, uh, they were uh, you know, a little bit thinner. But in a good home deck, these ones actually didn't sound bad. And if you wanted to record a couple CDs, well, this would let you record a couple of CDs. Anyway, I bought a few of these tapes. I've had them for a long time, and uh, they've always worked quite well. Although I, I will admit that I haven't uh, actually used them in years, but I've still got them. Anyway, that's a uh, look at the, the mechanism. Now let's see why this thing's not working. To start with, I'm going to clean these switches, but in particular, it's this switch here, because this is the one that tells the mechanism whether there's a tape in place or not. And if this one's not detecting that there's a tape in place, it's not going to do anything. As you can see, if I put the meter on here, this is in diode test, so continuity mode. If I touch the two terminals on the back here and activate the switch, nothing happens. That should be like zero ohms. That should be like that. There it is. So that switch is, oh, yeah, that switch is kind of bad. I shouldn't have to press it up that hard to make a connection. That's me shorting the probes. So that switch is bad. They're all going to be bad. So we have to clean the switches for starters. Um, I don't know how the belts are on this thing. Let's take a look at the belts. Oh. Belts don't look to be bad, actually. There's actually a fair bit of there's a fair bit of torque on there. Yeah, I think the belts are okay on this. It's just I think it's just going to be the switches that are at fault. And there's only one belt. It's for the capstan shafts, right? Because the the reel drive is a direct drive. This is one motor here to drive the take up and supply reel. It's a direct drive motor, and there's one more motor that that uh, raises and lowers um, the mechanism which is going to be this one over here I believe it's that one this motor raises and lowers the, the heads this one is the real uh, drive and this one's the capstan motor the capstan motor is uh, one belt so let's clean these switches I'm just thinking what is going to be the best cleaner for this hmm what should I use should I use the deoxid or should I use the neutral on this one decisions decisions you know what? I'm going to go with the neutral on this one. Not that I've got anything against deoxid. So let's just uh, give these switches a shot of cleaner and see if that'll make them functional. I feel like getting diesel oil on my fingers. This stuff's got diesel in it. Smells like diesel. Burns like diesel. I think Deoxit uses as their as their carrier and a, and a portion of their cleaner. It's it's uh, smells like um, 
kerosene is what uh, it smells like dioxin is this stuff here smells like diesel fuel and this being the old stuff this is not the same neutral that you buy today this is uh, this stuff goes back to the 1980s so um, you can't buy this stuff now it's alcohol based now this one's this one's got uh, what's it got it's got tetrafluoroethane in it and you can't buy this stuff hope this can's gonna last me for a while because I'll never get another one um, you can't buy this stuff anymore because of course you know tetrafluoroethane has been uh, banned because this stuff is well it's freon right and uh, it uh, eats the ozone so they aren't allowed to make this stuff anymore but if you've got it you can still use it until you run out of it and then you can't buy it anymore but that the old neutral I, I used to swear by that stuff it was fantastic cleaner probably the, one of the best cleaners I've ever used uh, going back and I, I've been using that stuff since the 1970s before I even became a tech when I was a hobbyist I used to go down to Maine Electronics and just buy it they were a distributor back in the 70s and that was what they pushed so I started using that stuff when I was a you know when I was a, a young teenager tinkering around with radios and so forth and uh, got hooked on that uh, as a cleaner interrupted by the phone there we'll uh, test the resistance again and see if we've made any progress Of course, now I've got that dreaded diesel all over my fingers. But I think you can hear that it's uh, it's beeping now. So it's certainly better than it was. We can plug this thing in and see if it does anything. Okay. One down, one to go. working let's uh, see if it'll play anything got to turn my sound system on first There's no recordings on this thing that are complete. It's just my my uh, test tape. If I hit the reverse button, of course it'll go to the other the other side, which is nothing on the tape. We'll uh, put a tape in. It's got something on both sides. The good old Irish Rovers. Yes, auto reverse works. So we'll uh, do a recording on this thing. So let me just cue this tape up since this tape got all kinds of stuff on it, recorded over and over. 
we'll just uh, rewind it and start from the beginning. And yes, fast forward, rewind, we're fine. That's the tape that's noisy. One thing I didn't check on this unit whether whether it has uh, auto reverse recording or not. We'll check that out as soon as the tape's rewound. There, tape is rewound now. Let's see, does this have auto reverse recording? I bet it does. You can tell by just looking at where the erase head is if the erase head actually rotates with the uh, cord play head, which it does. Which you, you can see it here. So when you change directions, the head turns around and it has the erase head ahead of the record play head so it will record in both directions just playing back my existing recording that's on this tape and the left channel still sounds to be really low so I guess further cleaning of that head is necessary I know I didn't show you guys this so I know I'll show you guys just because uh, you know the saying if you don't show it nobody will believe you did it I did clean the pinch rollers and the caps and shafts on here but I'll I'll do it again just so you guys can see the filth that came out of this machine I already did it though I did it off camera I just did it again for you guys now because this unit here was exceptionally dirty that's looking a little bit better still got some debris on this Drawer here on this side, I want to try and get out. Yeah, it was pretty dirty, this unit, but uh, that's looking a little better. I still see what looks like a smoke film on this stupid head. I mean, it's just ridiculous, um, the contamination that's, that tobacco causes to everything. That's, uh, uh, that's not even better. Okay, let's uh, do a recording, a test recording. Okay, I have a track queued up. Um, play. Okay. Let this just go past the leader, the beginning of the tape here. I've got Dolby B noise production on, and we will start playing right now. Now let this whole track uh, record, and then we'll play it back and see how it sounds. Okay, we've rewound the tape. Let's see how it sounds. I did a recording on both directions on the tape too, so we tested the auto reverse.
clutter in there, but that's typical for cassette. Especially a cheap deck like this, but uh, it's working. I think the um, the wound wow flutter on the reverse direction is this pinch roller is just a bit worn. That's what is causing it to be a little bit higher. It seems to be more on the on the uh, on the uh, reverse direction. You can see that the, the pinch rollers have a different wear on them, but they're uh, they're getting kind of worn. I might they might restore, but uh, again they may not. They're they're, they're pretty hard. So I might be able to get these to restore a bit with uh, rubber renew, but I'm not too worried about that. I'll, I'll see whether I can. I'll see whether I can find some replacement pinch rollers. I think the chances of finding them are, are pretty slim. It's, it's it's not. It's not real bad. It's just I noticed a little bit of. Uh, that's the reverse direction there. I can certainly hear some flutter in there. I mean, these, these decks, I don't think were that great to begin with, but uh, that's what's certainly going to cause that is the pinch rollers themselves are worn. But I don't have any pinch rollers for this thing. I'd say the chances of finding some pinch rollers for this are pretty slim. I'll try um, putting some rubber renew on them and see if it improves or not, but I think I'm going to call it a day for this video because it wasn't working at all when I started on this and it was the switches. So. That's what goes wrong with these ones when those switches get dirty. They just won't work at all. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll uh, catch you again in the next one real soon. Bye for now.